Jesus. This book is an amazing book. Amen? I was thinking of it the other day and just meditating about this book. And one of the, one of the things that amazes me is that it's alive, it's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Do you believe that? But one of the things with this book is that we can read it and read about the amazing things that God has done and what God can do for us and then forget about it. And I was thinking, if only in my mind I could remove the pages from the book, this might not make sense to you, but in the way I think this makes sense to me and not actually see the pages but realize that it is God speaking directly to me. Just not writing words on, a, on, on paper so that we can read it and have a look at it now and then. But it's actually God speaking to me. God himself speaking to me. It contains mysteries that can change your life forever. Anybody been changed yet? Change your life forever. It's you unique because it has to be spiritually discerned. The natural mind cannot comprehend it. It's unique because it's the only one of its kind. There's really nothing like this book. There's nothing like it. It's a, it's a one of a kind. It's the only one like it. The, this book reveals who God is and, and what you can become. See, a, a person can be a failure, defeated, broken, smashed, but all of a sudden this book will tell you that you can become more than a conqueror. And if you just don't see it as words written on a page, but it's God speaking to you and you grab hold of that and you eat it and you partake of it or you drink from it, feed upon it, it will change your life forever. It reveals to us what Christ has done for us on the cross of Calvary. And, he, what, and what he did to Satan when he, raised, when he was raised from the dead. This totally, utterly destroyed him, stripped him naked, stripped him of all of his authority, given that authority to you and my, me. It re reveals what God has made available to us. How many people know that God has made things available to us? And it, this book reveals what God really has made available to us. Uh, when, when, when he poured out of his spirit upon all flesh on the day of Pentecost, when he gave us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the demonic realm, all the works of Satan, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. See, if we start to get a hold of that and start to let that get inside us, and when the enemy does come, instead of, you know, just seeing him as, as, you know, it's all over, say, no, 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 I am more than a conqueror. God has given me authority over you. And you stand up and you ta start taking authority. And you see, that pushes him back. I, I, I believe it's time to push the enemy back, amen? Push him back. Matthew 6, uh, 33 tells us not to seek after natural things. See, we can just start, go naturally, uh, start thinking naturally, but the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So this book reveals mysteries to us on how to break through, how to become this champion, how to become this overcoming person, how to become this victorious person, how to become this person that... that that the enemy has got no control over, but we have control over him. If the Bible is true and if it's real, and he, do, and he did say, I give you authority or I give you the authority to tread on serpents, that's the spirit world, and scorpions and over all the works of Satan. So to become that person, as, as, you, as you read the word, as it reveals to us everything that God has given to us, and we seek first the kingdom of God, and we go after being righteous, seek his righteousness, then God will start to add to us. 
If we just sit back and, and sort of pray, well, God, when you're ready, I'm ready. No, you've got to go after it, amen? You've got to go after it. We've got a football player there, and I watch that ball. When that ball's bouncing around, there, you've got 26 guys going after it, amen? Well, if it comes to me, no, that's not the way it works. It does sometimes, I guess. But, but you've got to go after it. And if you go after the things of God and go after what God has said to you and, and everything like that, then you start to push through and you start to push the enemy back. This is the greatest how-to book you'll ever, ever read. It'll tell you how to, how to win in life. It'll tell you how to be victorious, how to rule and reign with Christ. How to overcome temptation. How to overcome the trials, the, the negative thoughts. Anybody ever get a negative thought? No, of course we don't. That would be negative to say I have a negative report. <laughs> I'd like to focus our attention on being released from condemnation. And this morning I'm just going to start to scratch the surface a little bit. But I pray that what, what God's put into my heart, that we'll be able to grab hold of it and, and start to apply it to our life because I know condemnation is something that, that can pull you down and, and it can destroy your life. It can destroy what, you know, if, if you think wrong. You see, I believe that our mind is the battlefield. It keeps regurgitating, regurgitating the mistakes of the past, usually in the ver very early hours of the morning. And you wake up grumpy. Somebody asked Nancy one morning, she, they, said, they said to Nancy, Nancy, do you ever wake up grumpy? She said, yes, I wake him up every morning. <laughs> The, the, we've got, we, you know, that thing gets around us and, 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 and it gets into us. And a lot of times because of the focus and, and you see, evangelists focus on salvation of the lost. That's an amazing thing. That's a fantastic thing. Amen. So the message is about sin, condemnation, judgment, hell and our great need of a saviour. We need so desperately to be saved, born again, whatever you want to call it. We will never, ever, ever, ever forget and be eternally grateful and thankful for the redemptive work of the cross of Calvary. Amen? Are you thankful? Why don't you give him thanks right now for what he's done for you? Amen? Why don't you just say, thank you, Lord, that you've saved me. Thank you that you've delivered me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But Lord, I don't want to be just sin conscious. I've got to be righteous conscious. I've got to be conscious of my righteousness. I've got to be, I've, I've got to be conscious of what you actually did beyond the cross, what you, what you did when God raised Christ from the dead. What, what you did when you destroyed the works of Satan. What you did when you hung upon that, that cross and became a curse for us. When you carried our sin, when you carried our shame, when you carried our pain. The blood of Christ not only deals with sin, but it washes away the stain and the stench of sin. The stain and stench, gone, banished. Once and for all, amen. Gone. Everybody say gone. <laughs> gone. It's, it's got to be gone. After we're uh, saved, born again, receive Christ as Savior, we become a new creation. And this is what we've got to, I'm not, you know, I, let me liken it to this. We know the metamorphosis of a, of a grub, a chrysalis, and, and the butterfly. I look at the grub as when I lived in the world. When I lived in the, in the world system, and, and I, I, was, I was a grub, amen. I was a grub. But I, I, I look at the, the, the chrysalis as, as the, the dealings of God 
that you that you're cocooned in as God starts to deal with you, as He starts to reveal Himself to you, as He starts to change you. And then the butterfly, I liken that to the new birth, amen? The new creation that's born to fly. Let me say this. A butterfly never goes back to living like a grub. That is profound. <laughs> because a lot of times we get born again, all this stuff washed in the blood and everything like that, and then we go back and start living like a loser, living like a grub, crawling around, trying to find a little bit here, a little bit there. When God has set you free to fly, set you free to be everything that God wants you to be, amen. A new creation, a brand, brand new person, born to rule and reign. Let me say it again. A butterfly never goes back to living like a grub. No, it's now free. It's free to fly. Many Christians never act like they've been born again. Because condemnation holds them captive to their past. Anybody here got a past? 2 Corinthians 5, 17, verse 20. Uh, uh, and uh, a little bit of, my tongue's going faster than my mind. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. You know, let, let's just think of that for a little while. It's not a patch-up. It's not putting band-aids on problems. It's not trying to pretend that it never happened. But when we get born again, we become a brand new creature. Totally totally transformed, totally changed from the inside out, amen, born to, to rule and to reign or whatever it is, a new creation. Old things have passed away. In other words, they're dead. Behold, all things become new. If we, look, if we could just, I know we, we read this and we, we recite it, we say it many, many times, but if we can catch the mystery, the depth, and the reality of these verses, and we started to apply them to our lives, instead of crawling around like a grub, we might start to rise up and become the church. This nation of Australia, and even the whole world right now, needs a voice. Come on. Because all we're hearing is what the Antichrist is wanting to do. That is the bottom line. There is a club of Rome, the Illuminati, whatever you want to call them. I'm not being stupid here, but there's a bunch of people. They've got one aim, and that is to destroy the nation of the world, pull down the population, rule and reign, take over. But I want to tell you, they don't have a chance in hell because my God, my Savior, is going to rise up. He's going to take over. Hallelujah. He's going to put something in the church. But if we have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, we'll shake ourselves, get out of the, the grub mentality, and start to say, I am a new creature in Christ, and not have false humility that says I'm nothing but a worm. Now, when Nancy and I first started going to church, I wasn't saved. But I went to church with her to help her, to make her happy. Happy wife, happy life. You know what it's like. And the, everybody had communion. So I went out and I knelt at the rail. And the guy gave me a piece of cracker and a, and a cup like we have here. But then he said to me, he said, repeat this after me. I'm nothing but a worm. And I thought, oh, well, that's, that's, that's who I am. I'm nothing but a worm. And that was it. See, but I'm not a worm. I am not a worm. I'm a child of God, amen. I'm a new creature. 
I'm a brand new person. I've been washed with the blood. Hallelujah. And we're going to be a voice to be reckoned with. We're, we're going to rise up. The church will rise. I want to tell you this. Get ready because God's about to move big time on the church, I believe. There's coming a shaking. Hallelujah. There's coming revelation. Revelation. While we were praying this morning, and, and, I, and, and I just had this thought that, you know, when the disciples and God was talking to the disciples and, and, and sharing the, the truths and things like that with them, they didn't have a clue what he was saying. And, and, and be, in reality, many of us don't have a clue what's going on either. But what happened, what changed them is that God opened their understanding. Who wants their understanding open? Come on, lift up your hands. Open my understanding to what you're doing, Lord. Open my under. I need to know. I just don't want to, because, friend, there's so many voices today, you, you, you wouldn't have a clue what's going on. Because one says this, and one says that, and one says another thing. And one, oh, glory to God. Jesus, I heard him say, even I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> no. no, he never said that. He never said that. <laughs> he wouldn't say that. He wouldn't say that. All things become new. My mind has been renewed. Amen. Uh oh. How is that one? Anybody need your mind renewed? Come on. Come on. Come on. Our mind gets renewed. Renew your mind. The Bible speaks about renewing of our mind. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. Just think of that. This, this person that was a sinner messed up over there, God reconciled me that I can come in and be in God's presence. That we can come into this house and lift up our hands and worship and, and the presence of God can get all around your life. That's an amazing thing. See, that's what God's done for us. This is what this book tells us about what God has done. All things in you. Now, God has reconciled himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imparting or imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Listen to verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. What an amazing, just short passage of Scripture there. What an amazing thing that we might be totally, totally transformed. Let the truth, Father, let the truth of your word get inside us this morning. All things have passed away. They've died. All things become new. The old things of sin, condemnation, weakness, failure, doubt, and fear have passed away. They're finished. <laughs> but we carry them. We, ca we let that mongrel, oh, that. We, yeah. <laughs> we let him con us and bring condemnation on us. All that stuff has passed away. God has reconciled us to himself through Christ. He's made us one with himself. You know what else he's done? He's made us accepted. Wouldn't it be better to say, I'm a grub, I'm a no good, I'm not worth it, I'm no good, I'm terrible, I'm useless, instead of saying, I'm accepted, how are you? I'm accepted because this is my cousin. <laughs> he accepts me. You accept me, amen. You accept me, amen, because I'm your pastor, amen. You better accept me. Oh, you're in 
that I, 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 I don't have to cringe to come to God. I, I can stand boldly knowing that I've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, knowing that I'm a new creation. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect. Just ask Nancy. Ask the dog. <laughs> ask my neighbor. <laughs> no, don't ask any of them, please. <laughs> but you see, I, I've, been, I've been washed. I've been transformed. I, I'm a new creature. You ever seen those the toys that children get? They, they've got a, a something. Oh, man, I'm going to get out of my depth here because I've never really touched one of them properly. But, but one minute it looks like a car, and next minute it turns into a hulk. Eh? A transformer. Well, whatever. You, you're catching my drift here. And that's what the, that's what I was, but I'm no longer like that. I've been I, I've become a transformer, hallelujah. I gotta be I gotta be careful how I do that or I'll split my shirt, hallelujah. <laughs> Is anybody getting any of this? <laughs> Amen. God's reconciled us to himself through Christ. I've made, we're, he's made us one. We're acceptable. Listen to this. Without the washing of the precious blood, oh, man, I cannot thank God so much more than I, I don't have natural words to do. That's why i got to speak in tongues. Without the washing of the precious blood of Christ, we wouldn't be able to stand before a holy God. We would be Smith's chips. <laughs> See, when, when we ask Jesus to forgive us our sins, we instantaneously became a redeemed Child of God. It's not something that I've got to get credentials for and do 10 years of this or go to seminary or go to purgatory or go here or there. All I've got to do is go to the cross of Calvary and ask Jesus to come into my life where instantaneously made a redeemed child of God. Hallelujah. And we were reconciled back to God. This butterfly is not going to act like a worm again. Reconcile back to God. Reconcile means to make atonement. That word at one meant atonement. To be changed throughout. Some, some of us have done stupid things, okay? I can name a few like drugs. People might have even had an abortion, adultery, stolen something. You know, I, I, when I was a kid, I did some terrible things. I did some terrible things. But, you know, sometimes you think of that and you think, what would have happened if I would have got caught? Eh? Well, man, and, and it put sh shutters through you, you know what I mean? Good news really is this. It's all gone. <laughs> all that rubbish that I did, all that, that mess that I made in my life is finished. It's paid for in full. Paid for. Don't carry the guilt and shame of something Jesus has carried and paid for. See, the, a lot of these things that I'm saying today, it's a decision. Because I, I know that that at times there you start thinking like this and, and, and as, as I said early in the morning and you don't seem to have a lot of control but, but you wake up in the morning and you feel terrible and you've got you to shake yourself and you've got to say, that is not true, that's a lie from the devil. You dirty mug. <laughs> don't carry the guilt and shame. Just give thanks with a grateful heart and walk in the truth. Jesus, in verse 21, says, Jesus who knew no sin was made to be sin on our behalf 
that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. you believe that today? Let's have a little look at Romans 8. Romans 8, we, we know these verses only too well, but again, I'm going over verses that I know very, very well. But I'm reading what they say. Because sometimes we can lose it when we, when we just let it go over our head. This is what it says. It is, there is therefore now no condemnation. To those who are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus today? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. And forget not all of the benefits. Who what? Who redeemed my life from destruction. You know the rest of it. I can't remember it at the moment. He paid a price. You, you've got to understand that, that forget not what God has done for us, but, but take it on, get hold of it. You walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, for the Lord of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me in bondage. No, oh, has made me free. <laughs> Give me a wave if you're free. Come on, freedom, freedom, freedom. Made me free. From the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled. Okay, He fulfilled the law in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation. Ephesians 1, 6 uh, uh, to 8, it says, Jesus made us accepted. Jesus made us accepted. In the Beloved, we are accepted. And in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of His grace. Verse 8 says, Which He made abound towards us. Jesus poured out His grace upon us. He, uh, sorry. I didn't deserve it. Anybody here deserve it? None of us deserved it. But He did it all the same. Amen. Satan's the one that comes and condemns, but Jesus is the one that forgives. Amen? He's the one that justifies. You know, we used to sing a song way, way back. And, you know, sometimes when we, we sing songs and that, and they just uh, people make jokes of it. The Christian Outreach Center, when, when it first started 50-odd years ago now, we used to sing this song. We'd sing it every Sunday. We would, would not sing it once. We would sometimes sing it ten and ten and ten times over ten. I found a new way of living. I found a new life divine. I have the fruit of the Spirit. I'm abiding, abiding in the vine. Abiding in the vine, abiding in the vine. Love, joy, health, peace, He has made them mine. I have prosperity. Power and victory, abiding, abiding in the vine. <laughs> Woo! But just look at the truth that's in those words. I found a whole new way of living. Amen. I have prosperity. I have power. I have victory. I'm abiding in the vine. When you're, that's what happened when we got born again. We got grafted in. This old branch got grafted in, hallelujah. And now it's bearing fruit. That's what God's looking for. He's looking for fruit. He's not looking for branches. 
He looked at a fig tree once and that all it had was branches, he cursed it. He's looking for fruit. Fruit in our lives. How do you, what, what fruit? A little bit of joy wouldn't go too bad, would it? You know what? The joy of the Lord is your strength. That I'm a miserable worm. I'm just a worm. No, you're not. You're a child of God. Hallelujah. You've been redeemed. You've been set free. The power of God's all over you. I found a new way of living. It really, really is a profound statement. Christianity is really a whole new way of living. <laughs> I have prosperity. I, oh, I, I have to sing it again, and I don't want to put you through that. On. No place for condemnation. In the new creation, there's no place for condemnation. We, 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 we have to learn to walk in fellowship with the Lord. 1 John 1, 3 and 4 says, That's which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you may also have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full. Anybody need a bit of joy? It doesn't mean that we won't be tempted. It doesn't mean, you know, it's an excuse to sin. We all have a failure. But if we walk as new creations, if we walk as that, as that person, that, and we realize that, that if we do happen to fall, if we do make a mistake, that we can come to a loving Father and, and we can say, Father, I, I messed up. And, oh, man, I, I would love to say I'm perfect, but I'm not. I've made mistakes. I've done things. And, and you, and you, but what you've got to do is you just got to say, Father, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. And we've got a Father that loves us so much that he will forgive us our sin. Amen. And then you just walk on this new creation person. Amen. And, and, and let the Spirit of God get around you. Well, I was preparing this this morning, or yesterday or whenever it was. I felt the Spirit of God say that there's somebody here that when you were young, there's something happened and, and the enemy is, is just hassling you and smashing you. I want to tell you today by the Spirit of God, God knows and He wants you to know today that you are free. You're free in Jesus' name. Don't carry that thing anymore. There might be people here today that say, I, I just want to make sure, I want to put the past behind me. I, 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 want, to, I, want, to, I, want, I want the future in front of me. I want, I, want to, I want to just move ahead, hallelujah. I'm not going to let that, that past be like, a, like, like dragging something behind me. Pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and get rid of it, hallelujah. And go on with God in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know where we're at today, where you're at, but I just pray today that we respond to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I'm this new creature. I'm going to live like this new creature. I'm going to tell the devil where to get off. I'm going to even give him his pedigree. You're a... Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's stand here. Can I let this be a day when we can get free from rubbish, free from junk, free from mess, free and so that we can be. You know, sometimes it's that, that this stuff gets around us like a snare. That, you know, the Bible says, my soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. If I know anything, after being a Christian for a long time, the enemy puts entrapments. He snares us. He traps us. Come on. Today, say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be free. I'm going to walk in freedom. I'm going to walk in liberty. 
I'm going to put that behind me. Whatever, I, I'm just going to put it all behind me. And I'm going to walk with God. Come on, let's just, if you're here this morning and God's speaking to you and you want to just walk away and walk out of and walk into, why don't you just slip out the front here this morning? Why don't you just slip out here as we play a little bit of pre interlude music there? <laughs> But just come. Just come. God sees us. God watches us. Our past is behind us. Praise God is behind us. But if you're feeling like the enemy just keeps tormenting you, coming at you, hitting you with a particular thing, today's the day to say that's finished. It's finished. It's over. It's dealt, dealt with. It's done. Once and for all, it's over. No more. No more. No more. No more. No more. No more. Will that thing harass me? Father, from this day forward, we're going to walk in newness of life. We're going to allow this new creation person to, to come forth in Jesus' name. And Lord, we'll give, give you all the praise, give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. God bless you.